Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about timing belts versus timing chains inside your car's engine. Now for most internal combustion engines the crankshaft which the pistons are connected to spins around and that's connected to the camshaft which opens and closes the valves and there's various ways you can connect it. Now a long time ago in my grandfather's day the early engines they didn't even use timing belts or timing chains they had timing gears. The bottom crank had a gear and then gears went to the camshaft which spun the camshaft and then push rods opened and closed the valves. Now that was a solid reliable system. You had gears connecting them. But that had two main disadvantages. One, it cost a lot of money to make good gears to put that together and the gears themselves had a tendency of making whining noises that people didn't like. So then instead of having gear on gear to spin it, they decided to use a timing chain. In these engine designs the crankshaft sprocket had teeth on it, then a timing chain, then another sprocket with teeth that ran the camshaft. All the old American V8 engines were made that way and some of them are still that way. You can see these are thick hardy chains. This one came off a 350 Chevrolet. They're really strong. They last an awful long time. But of course it costs money to make hard steel sprockets and an expensive chain. So then came the idea of the timing belt. Instead of a timing chain the pulley on the bottom of the crank and the pulley on the camshaft was connected using a rubber base timing belt. And contrary to what people might try to tell you, the only reason they went to timing belts is because it's cheaper to make them. When you have a sprocket that uses a timing chain it has to be really strong steel but the sprockets that run these rubber base timing belts they can be a lot softer because they're just pulling rubber. They're not steel. So most of the manufacturers switched over to timing belts. Now with a car like this Toyota that's well designed a 94 Celica those rubber timing belts sometimes could last hundreds of thousands of miles. They tell you to change them every 100,000 or 90 or so. But they were pretty reliable in the Toyota engine and there's one big advantage of this design. Almost every Toyota engine ever made is a non-interference engine. So if the timing belt breaks the pistons don't hit the valve and do any damage. But when you take cars like many of the Nissans they were a faster engine racing design. So the pistons went higher and the valves came lower so if those rubber belts ever broke when you're driving on a highway kabam the pistons hit the valves they'd break the engine and destroy the engine. I see many people in the past few decades with these timing belt Nissans had the belt break ruined the engine and they said you telling me that this $30 belt broke made out of rubber and it destroyed my engine? I'll never buy another Nissan. Well in response to this Nissan was one of the early companies to go from timing chains on their cars to timing belts and then back to timing chains so that they wouldn't have this problem. And unfortunately for Nissan and the people who brought them a lot of those early switchover that went from timing belts to timing chains had problems with the timing chains because Nissan made them kind of poorly. But the idea was correct and now many manufacturers have switched back to timing chains. And the main reason for that is a higher design capacity of smaller engines. They're making smaller engines, put out more horsepower, putting variable valve timing and other things inside and that strains the timing belt so much that the rubber timing belts we have a tendency of breaking too often. And to get added horsepower to these smaller engines, a lot of the manufacturers that used to make non-interference engines are now making interference engines. But since they have a steady steel chain that's driving it, they don't have the problem of a rubber belt snappy. Take this Matrix, it's 12 years old, it's got a timing chain inside the engine. Never had a problem, as quiet as can be, and runs just as good as it did when it was brand new. Because really, steel chains they beat the heck out of a rubber based timing belt any day of the week if the chains are made correctly. And I know some guys maybe motorcycle guys are going to say but Scotty chains need lubrication. Well guess what the timing chain is inside the engine. It's coated with the engine motor oil. It is inside the engine. So as long as you change your engine oil regularly this chain is lubricated with nice clean engine oil and it can last a really long time. Rubber hey it deteriorates over time. It's going to stretch over time and yeah a chain stretches a little over time but it takes a lot more time and mileage to stretch solid steel than it does 
rubber. And sure, it costs a lot more money to manufacture a chain and build an engine that way, but hey, they're not giving away modern cars, so <laughs> you're paying enough money, you really want one that's got a solid timing chain in it. Because I doubt they'll ever go back to making gear driven cams. That just costs way too much money, and as I said earlier, it doesn't make a reasonable amount of whining noise, and people want quieter cars. They don't want louder ones. Now, of course, the rubber based timing belts were really quiet, but in a modern engine, they just wouldn't hold up. With all those extra cams and variable valve timing and GDI direct injection, there's a lot more pressure. A rubber belt can't take it, but a chain can. So if you're shopping around for a new car, hey, me, I'd make sure it had an engine with a timing chain and not one of these flimsy rubber based timing belts. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.